Hey guys, in this video I'm going to give you a quick update on the uh, Halloween snowstorm that's going to sweep across the United States. We're going to talk about track timing, snowfall amounts, and look at some cool weather charts on a new website that I'm going to show you here. So, <clears throat> let's get right into it. This is a Wednesday now at around, around uh, 4 a.m. in the morning, and there's been a couple of changes from my previous forecast. Overall, it looks pretty good. Uh, but there's a couple of changes. One of uh, the changes is kind of this area right here. The snowfall amounts have shifted south by about 50 to 100 miles, and they're a little bit less in that area. Now, this area still looks pretty good for to be the best area for snowfall, maybe just a little south of there. Now, as we track towards the day here on Wednesday, you can see this high pressure system blowing in cold air. You can see this temperature gradient here in the thickness lines. But there's a lot of dry air here. The system isn't quite organized like it was in previous runs, but still plenty of snow, significant snow for Colorado and also for West Iowa, out into Illinois, and maybe Southeast Wisconsin. As this tracks into the day on Thursday, you can see that this will uh, move to the east. It'll start to become more organized. I said this in the previous video that I thought the greatest likelihood for this thing to really get ramping was once it hit the Midwest region and beyond and that's what's going to happen you can see the snowfall rates significantly increasing very cold air behind this thing uh, very very cold air lots of rain out ahead of it in the east coast and as you can see as we go towards thursday at 1 p.m now michigan is actually under the gun for this system previously they weren't there might be some wraparound snow as far south as southern michigan and maybe even ohio and indiana now <clears throat> So that's definitely something we're watching. But as you can see here, we have a much nicer organized low pressure system, a classic comma head appearance. And then you got more snow all of a sudden up in this area on uh, Friday, Saturday, or uh, thanks, or, uh, whatever, uh, Halloween through uh, Friday. And then you can see this thing really gets ramping now as it uh, hits towards the east coast. But it doesn't quite have enough cold air brought down, and it's just a little bit too far north. Uh, for snow in the east coast the east coast is mostly under the warm sector so that's uh, essentially south of the warm front and almost 100 percent of the time in the warm sector you're going to get rain and sometimes some thunderstorms too so mostly rain from the east coast but as you can see snow out there north of the great lakes into canada and uh, then that tracks out into uh you know the eastern portions of canada as we head towards saturday <clears throat> Now, what we're going to look at is something called the HREF model. And this is an ensemble of models. So it's a, a bunch of different model runs or model types, and they kind of blend them together here. And uh, this is good for uh, forecasting snowfall amounts, especially when you have models that were kind of all over the place like we had earlier in this week. And we can go over to the winter pattern or the winter section here. And uh, we can look at something. We're just going to look at a couple of these for fun here. We'll look at 24-hour snowfall. Now, this is a uh, different uh, values what we're looking at here. Max mean. Max means the maximum model. What's the max that could fall based off the highest model? And then mean is the average of the model. So we'll look at max first and see uh, like what maybe the craziest model is thinking. This is uh, Wednesday here. And then you can see 12 to 15 inches. Obviously very unlikely to happen because it's the max model. But this is kind of fun to look at. And then you can see about a 1 to 3 inch range from Kansas out into uh, Illinois. Then as you go towards Thursday, this is 12 hours later, another, you know, six to 10 inches up in this area, and then a good swath of uh, two to four inches, maybe including Nebraska too. And then you go <clears throat> towards the day on Halloween, and you can see, oh, this is actually Friday, but you can see plenty of uh, snow here. This is kind of uh, Friday morning, and you can see six to eight inches up in this area with the core out in this area. So really the previous forecast was similar, except this area has just moved south just by about 100 miles. So instead of northeast Iowa and central Wisconsin, it's going to be more like southeast Wisconsin and uh, northwest Illinois. And it's been very consistent now with this track. So I think the track is starting to get locked down. Uh, we'll definitely watch that, though. But we'll look at the mean now. And this is more of a realistic measure. So on Wednesday, you could see... According to the HREF model, you know, six to eight inches in northeast portions of Colorado, maybe a little bit of a snow out ahead of this thing, and then, a, you know, one to two inches, one to four inches around that. Then you go to Thursday, 
through 7 p.m. on Thursday. And you can see now the snow is extending out into Illinois, up into Nebraska, and uh, still out in Colorado with a good one to four inches kind of in this region right here. Now, with the HREF model and these kind of models, I've noticed that the track is the most accurate with these models. So this is kind of a good idea of where the heaviest snow will line up. And as you can see on Thursday, it's going to be right near just east of Chicago, or west of Chicago, out into Illinois, northern Missouri, northern Kansas, out into uh, western eastern Colorado. And then you can see another area up in uh, Nebraska. Then Friday, this starts to extend and move to the north. You can see that's kind of the best area right there with a good uh, two to four inches. So that area had, you know, an inch or two prior, and then you add that on, and so maybe like three to six inches. And then obviously uh, there could be more through the day on Friday that falls up here too. So that this model only goes out to uh, Friday at 7 p.m. So, you know, it could have more overnight too. Uh, but it definitely looks like, you know, a good swath of four to eight inch, three to six, four to eight inches in this area. Around that area, you know, maybe uh, one to four inches. And then out in this area in Colorado, significant snowfall. Some areas seeing, you know, nine, ten inches plus for Halloween. So any leaves on the tree, that's pretty catastrophic if uh, you do have a lot of leaves on the tree. Luckily, a lot of those are falling off. We're going to look at something called the SREF as well here. But first, let's look at the blizzard potential here. So let's just see uh, for fun here the blizzard potential as we head towards Friday. And it's nothing showing up here, so that's uh, pretty good news. And then uh, let's see if anything else is uh, fun to look at here. One hour snowfall. So this is kind of uh, your inches per hour. So how heavy will the snow be? And as you head towards uh, Wednesday here, this is, uh, let's go to about 8 a.m. Wednesday. Well, a little bit before you can see. In the morning on Wednesday, you can see about a half inch to maybe an inch in some areas in Colorado, generally a quarter inch to a half inch, so moderate snowfall. Then as we head towards uh, Wednesday afternoon and evening into Thursday now, this is Thursday morning, you can see the heaviest snow actually, you know, most of the snow in here is going to be light, okay? It's going to be very light in this area, maybe a batch of moderate here and there, but, uh, you know, it's really going to start getting cranking as it heads towards Illinois, Wisconsin, Iowa, and uh, Missouri when that low pressure system really starts to strengthen. As a result, you're going to get more uh, feedback and, and heavier snowfall rates. But overall, just moderate for the most part, 0.25 to 0.5 inches an hour, maybe a couple of areas that hit, uh, you know, three-fourths of an inch. So light to moderate overall, Colorado maybe moderate to heavy in some areas. This uh, model is the SREF model, and uh, what this model is, it's very similar. It just goes a little bit longer range. So this is also on the SPC, and you can see uh, we have a ton of different options here. You can look at freezing rain, probability of snow, all that type of stuff, temperature. So let's look at, uh, let's do 12, how about this, 12-hour snowfall. We can see how much that's forecasting. You can see uh, for Colorado, about 10 to 12 inches here, and that really starts to track to the east. What I've noticed with the SREF is it underdoes snowfall amounts after about 12 hours in advance. So we've got to be careful of that. It seems to underdo it. But what we look at here is the track. The track is what's important with the SREF. And you can see on Halloween here, the best area is lining up just right in that area. So it's very similar to the uh, HREF for the most part, and it's been very consistent for this area being the best area for the snowfall system this uh, on Halloween, and also this area. There's going to be obviously a decent amount of snow here, just not as much. You know, for hall for fall, there's a decent amount at least. And then as we head towards Friday, you can see this goes a little bit farther out, and you can see this is really when the low strengthens, and you can see the best track is right through Michigan now. So Michigan is now under the gun right through the lakes into Canada and has a few inches at least falling here. I think there's going to be more than a few inches in some of these areas, especially up here. You can see five to maybe eight inches up here. So it really starts to get cranking, but the, the general track kind of out in this area right here for the best snowfall, as you can see. We'll look at a couple other things here. And then what we'll do is look at one more thing. It's called analogs. And I'll show you what site to go for that. 
it's uh, pretty cool. We can actually compare this storm with other storms and use it as guidance. We'll look at um, snowfall rate again here, and you can see snowfall rate. Oh, this is the probability of snowfall rate for more uh, more than an inch an hour. And you can see there's a, an elevated chance as you head towards Illinois and Michigan. Only about a 10% though. So it also is indicating that uh, it's mostly going to be light to moderate snow. Probably won't get anything crazy here. So thunder snow probabilities have decreased. Don't think you're going to have thunder snow or anything crazy like that. And then you can do uh, as much as 3 inches an hour. But obviously we're not going to be getting that. And then uh, another thing is we want to look for is snowfall ratios. And what these are is how fluffy or wet the snow is, essentially. So as you can see, it's a 35 to 1 ratio. That might be overdoing it, but we'll see. I mean, maybe higher elevations. You know, and when you get higher ratios, you get powdery or snowfall. When you get lower ratios, it's wet. When it's zero, it's liquid, so it's rain. You know, 5 to 1 ratios, like half water and half, uh, you know, ice crystals. You know, so, you know, as you go up, you get just fluffier and fluffier. And you can see it's kind of early on, it's going to be pretty low, 5 to 10 to 1 in this region. Obviously, in Colorado, it's going to be very fluffy. But early on, on Wednesday here, it's going to be uh, pretty wet snow as the freezing line will kind of be near this area. But as we head towards uh, Halloween and beyond, as this thing moves to the east, I'm actually thinking that you're going to see higher ratios than what this particular model says. This has actually got 5 to 1 and then 10 to 1 up here. I think you're going to see more 10 to 1 ratios out in this region over here where I think you're going to have a lot of cold air to work with. So this might be underdoing it just a bit. But overall, it's going to be a wetter snow for a lot of people, especially out in, kind of in this region right here. North of this area, more chances for powdery stuff. So I think that will uh, wrap up the SREF. Now what we could do, let's see if there's anything else. You know, freezing rain and sleep, but we're not going to have that threat with this system for the most part. So we'll save that for another time. So one more thing we'll look at is the SIPS analogs. And these are, uh, you just type in CIPS analog into Google and you'll find the site should pop up. But this is measuring previous winter storms that happened in the past. And it's comparing it with what the models are showing for this storm system. So we can use past events to kind of guide us for this event. And you can see uh, it's pretty similar. So these are a bunch of past events, top 15. And you can see generally what's the snowfall amounts. Well, generally, kind of in this region right here, except for northeast Kansas, you know, you're seeing about two to four inches, one to four inches, essentially. And then as you head towards Michigan and uh, the lakes here, potentially as much as six to eight inches. And then also a good swath of four to eight in Colorado, Wyoming. And we also noticed that there's this kind of that split in the snowfall amounts there's like a little area in nebraska and then also in central and southern kansas so that's kind of interesting because the uh nam was kind of showing that some of the models are actually kind of showing up but you can see the general track is just about the same maybe it's a little bit farther north on the analogs but for the most part it is pretty similar you know if you were to kind of blend these together it's really looking like this area and uh you know a few miles north and south it's going to be the area that gets smacked for the storm system, especially up in northern Michigan for Halloween. And I think most of the leaves are gone on the trees up there. But, man, if there is any that are remaining, it could be a pretty uh, damaging to the trees, especially with a wetter snow and a lot of snow up there. I think there is trees and leaves still on uh, Michigan, but uh, Wisconsin, Michigan, those areas are definitely going to be the areas we want to watch. So that's uh, the snowfall amounts. And we'll, what we can do here, do near blizzard conditions, and you can see an elevated risk out here in northern uh, Illinois and southern Wisconsin. I would actually, And that looks pretty good. Like if I were to say the, the best chance for this area for blizzard conditions, it would be when that low deepens out here and it would be in this area. But I think overall the threat is pretty low, you know, maybe 10% chance. So one other thing we can look at is the top analog. So the top analog here, you know, you look at these. These are all your analogs, your previous events that look familiar. So if you see any of that ring a bell, you know, you can definitely look at those. But you can see 1991. And this is October 9th, 19, 
actually it's 1990 so it's october 9th 1990 this is the most similar event so if you're around to remember that one it could be similar to that you can see an open wave and the system has kind of had more of an open look to it in some areas but it really is going to close off over here so this is a little bit prior to when i think it's going to get strongest here and let's look at the snowfall for this system um and you can see really only wisconsin um it looks like they're missing data on this one so we'll try a different one but kind of the general same area in wisconsin we'll try a different uh analog now it's possible that, that was the only area that got snow but let's see try this uh yeah, this one looks a little bit better, but much farther south. And you can see this analog. It's a lot farther south, and it actually pegs this area. Southeast Kansas, so, you know, maybe that helps out the southeast Kansas area a little bit more. But let's see. Let's look at another one. You know, this is probably going to be an event where you have them all over the place like this. It's probably good to look at the blended one that, that we just looked at a, a minute or two ago. So that's probably going to be better than looking at these individually. We look at uh, this, yeah, so that one's also far south. So a lot of these are a little bit farther south for uh, whatever reason. But overall, they're, you know, if you average them out, they're kind of very similar to this previous storm system. So I think that's the most we'll look at for this. And uh, we'll look at the upper levels real quick just to see how things are going up there. And then uh, we'll wrap it up here. And then we'll look at what the NAM's showing. And you can kind of see what happened here is this wave isn't closing off in time. It's kind of open. Now, it finally starts to close off as it gets into Iowa and westward. And once it starts to close off like this, the upper levels, you'll start to see a strengthening in the low pressure system. There's plenty of vorticity here for lift, but open waves just typically aren't the best for storm systems. You usually get rain out ahead of it and then a flat area of snow behind it but it's usually kind of light snow and moderate like we're seeing. But you can see as it gets towards Canada, this energy significantly increases, and now it becomes a major snowstorm. You can see extreme vorticity up there. Very classic look for a powerful storm system for Canada, maybe even the northern fringe of Michigan. So the system still looks to be major, just doesn't quite organize in time in the uh, central plains. So... We'll go at snowfall one more time here, and this is the NAM computer model. And what's the NAM saying? Very similar to those analogs, as you can see. A little batch of snow up here with, you know, that's about one to four inches. Colorado, you got some northeast Colorado. You got about, you know, some areas getting six to eight inches in there. And then uh, another batch out here in Illinois, Missouri, Kansas, Iowa, and Wisconsin up into Michigan and Canada. And you can see this area is potentially six to 10 inches in some of these areas. Now, I'd say the best threat for that would be kind of up in this region right here. You can see a foot even indicated here. Maybe more like four to eight inches out here would be my guess for uh, Chicago and potentially just a little bit farther north than what this model is saying. But uh, overall, it looks pretty similar to those analogs. GFS computer model. Look at this real quick. It's a lot farther north, as you can see. And I uh, actually got another storm system up in the northern plains. We might have to talk about it later. But you can see much more snowfall as well. A good 6 to 12 inches in this area. So still indicating a major snowstorm actually indicates a major snowstorm for Kansas City. I think the GFS is overdoing it a bit here. But the amounts are starting to go back up for some of these areas. Like I said, I think a general kind of out in this region, you know, a general two to four inches or so. And then this region kind of out in this area, maybe uh, as much as four to nine inches or so, four to eight. A couple of areas in there getting nine inches, maybe towards Michigan. And then uh, obviously Canada we could be dealing with uh, six to 12 inches in some of those areas. So. That's going to wrap it up for this video. If you like this video, hit that smash, smash that thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button, and uh, hit those bell notifications because we do a live. Hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you soon.